Welcome back to the channel if you are returning and welcome if you are new. Hello to all family, friends, and neighbors. Hopefully, hopefully this time when I record this video, the volume will be on. I didn't know that the microphone was turned off yesterday and I was planning to get the video up and out as fast as I could so that I didn't miss another week <laughs> and when I went to edit said video I was going what is wrong with my audio why is my audio not working why is this not and then I clicked on the little drop down thing arrow that allows me to see the audio on the video and I went wait a minute <laughs> there should be two spots the video the audio so I grabbed my phone and I was like uh oh <laughs> did I do it <laughs> yes I did I guess the last time that I I forget what I filmed but I had turned off the audio because I didn't want it to pick up the TV in the background and for some reason my phone keeps defaulting to that or I didn't turn it off because that's not the first time that's happened that the phone defaulted to the, I was going to say microwave, the microphone being off. Gonna do not start that. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh. It's like you're becoming the number one thing when I do this or me out crying little you are naughty naughty little duty anywho so what was I saying so when I went to check the again I want to say microwave my mouth wants to say microwave this is what happens when you're tired <coughs> my microphone was off so I realized there was basically nothing I could do because there was no way that I could record just the audio and overlay it because there were a few times where I messed up reading and if I did not find a way to perfectly put the audio over that video then you guys would see me talking I'd be Millie Vanilli <laughs> it would clearly be bad lip sync there so I was going, you know what, whatever, I'm just going to record the video over, I will delete this file, but I couldn't help, <laughs> but if you go on my Facebook or my Twitter, I think I put it on Patreon and Coffee because I keep trying to use those too in case you don't want to follow social media, but I had shared the thumbnail <laughs> that I was playing around with and I was like this is a this is a nice this is a nice face that I made <laughs> it sums up everything that just took place so I shared that because I always poke fun of myself I don't really care so anywho so as I said on that share that I was trying to read the first chapter of Savage Lands. <clears throat> I don't remember everything that I mentioned, but I'm going to be reading from chapter two instead of chapter one because with the story that I wrote when I was editing it, some years ago is when everything happened that <laughs> required the bokey bokey and the way this story starts was almost a playbook for what was actually taking place in the world I think I only inputted about 1% off of what was happening because I noticed how people were treating each other and a lot of that was already happening in the book but then I was playing off of that a little bit otherwise 
like 99% of the start of this story was creepily exactly what was taking place. <laughs> and unintentionally done, we all always end up not just writers, but game creators, any creators. That's a huge thing. A disease that wipes out the world or whether that does it. Some kind of catastrophe that takes place in general. And I didn't know where to start the book. I went back and forth with how to start the book because you get in trouble with I'm having to adjust because my seat is not comfy. I should find a pillow to put under my bum. With the issue of backstory and trying to introduce readers, you can actually struggle with keeping a reader interested. It can often be a balancing act how much backstory to incorporate at the beginning, how much to incorporate in general, because the idea is to bring a reader into your world, explain to them what's going to take place, but not to the point where you are not giving them stuff to figure out so that they will stop reading. A lot of people will put some backstory in a prologue, but I've read far too many people say they don't read those nowadays. Epilogues, I think, get read a little more. But prologues, sadly, a lot of people will not at all read those. I think if the person... A couple different things. If the person's not... They're probably not your reader if they are not interested in reading your prologues. It could just be a one-off. It could just be a thing that they don't do. But if you feel it's important to use the prologue, use the prologue. Many do read that. Later on, someone who doesn't read it might read it later and suddenly be like, Oh, this I missed out on a lot of stuff because this information is right there. A lot of people don't like a lot of backstory in the beginning. Plenty do. Plenty would rather it sprinkled throughout the beginning. Not at all included. So for me, and I can be that picky with books too. Sometimes if I'm reading, I start to skim because I'm going, okay, this is a lot more than I need. And it's getting boring. And I want to see if the main story is interesting. Even with my own, that criticism is not directed purely at other people. And I sometimes will cut a lot of stuff I've included because I start skimming my own work and I'm going, yep, don't need all this. I'm done with this. Delete this. Delete this. I did it with Hope of the Future. Had too much information that ended up not really adding to the story. So I just... So... <laughs> For me, it's a balancing act with each story. Do I include it? How do I include it? Where do I include it? In what kind of format? The person's memories? Plenty of us constantly have the mind going with thoughts. Even if we're talking, even if we're interacting, we're heavy thinkers, so something's always going on up there. I even have it right now. Someone in the head thinking of stuff I've got to do, thinking about reading this, plenty going on up here that's not going down here. <clears throat> so when I do each story, I address, it's a feeling that I get, just like I say for a lot of stuff, it's not feeling as an emotion, it's feeling as in a instinct that comes from experience. How do I want the story read? How do I want it come across to you? How do I want it to be in general? 
I think too many these days just think only about I need to point out why this person is a terrible person because they do this because I don't like this so it's a bad thing I'm going to tell them in this story why that is a bad thing and then it disconnects you from the story because you are just getting preached to about why this is bad or that's bad or this is the problem in the world you need to know about you need to fix you need to do something about and it becomes a disconnect instead of just a natural world that I make you forget that there's a reality on the outside with and that can happen with too much backstory at the beginning too much backstory not at the beginning so with this one I had actually my first chapter had started as my first chapter, but then it ended up being, I think, second or third chapter. Then shortly before publishing, when I got it back from Deep Edits, I think, I put my first chapter back as the main part of the backstory. Why I end up not sharing the first chapter, because it is giving a lot of backstory that I want you to wait to hear about until you read the book. So today I am going to just read the second chapter and I will show you the cover too because I quite like this cover. Oh and this one is in paperback. If you see me grab a book and it, I'm not covering this and this has my full name on it you can find it right now in paperback. The link is in the description all the time. You can either go to the official page and then click over to the retailer's link for the paperback or just go down to the Lulu link which is all the way at the bottom. The very very last link I have added a new one so that if you want to know all the work that I have published, I always update that list. It's a list of all the titles. It says whether it's not yet published, if it's still waiting to be edited, or if there's nothing there, it has been published. I don't have that for the paperbacks. Just go to Lulu and you will see if stuff's in paperback, because if it's not on Lulu, it's not on paperback. Lulu is the source to find what all is currently in paperback, and this is one of them. I believe Time of the Chosen is another, and A Granddaughter's Magical Curfew, a short story from the Sorceress world, but it takes place in the far future. I know that's a very unconventional way to do it, but I was going, this would be really fun to introduce now to introduce a lot of the coming characters, not exactly giving away all the information, but just as an introduction and it's a fun little story. So I think that one also I have up there. I I think I have a couple others, but I can't, I don't know. So I will be, as I said, oh yeah, it's going to show the cover. But I used a few different things for this cover because she's not necessarily representative of Kinley as much as just the type of world that this takes place in hard. Is that it? And then I put some lions up here, very faint, because they are not a main big part of the story. But you, since the world fell apart, and now zoos did, there's no telling what you're going to find creeping across the horizon and all of that. And I obviously included a bunch of wolves and stuff. But I thought it was a really fun little full image to use for it. So 
So this is chapter two of Savage Lands by Kimberly Sue Iverson. Read by Kimberly Sue Iverson. Before she moved, Kimberly pricked her ears to heighten her hearing as far out as possible. The pack relied on her advanced capabilities to gauge danger. In the distance, she picked up the faintest tink, tink, tink of a crow picking at an abandoned car, most likely overrun with moss. Beneath the moss, the bugs it sought. What little pickings there were, unless it found yet another carcass. That was rare. Even rats were. She wasn't sad about that one. Nobody fared any better than that crow these days. A gentle, muggy breeze stirred her unbrushed, dingy hair across her nose, reminding her they hadn't found a bathing source in quite a while. The breeze carried the stench of her older brother Sawyer from up the block. She scrunched her nose, refocusing. A sound caught her ear, and she tilted her head toward it, seeing whether human, other, or nothing. The latter would keep them here, former too, and she'd alert with a whistle that sounded like a bird of prey. Mimicking wasn't really a gift of their kind, but ever since they were children, Kinley loved annoying Sawyer by calling in animals. Once upon a time, before they wandered abandoned streets in the disastrous existence they called life, their father took them out on the ocean to fish. They were very young then. Kinley learned she could mimic different animals, so she mimicked the gulls. So well they flocked to the boat. Needless to say, Sawyer was none too pleased. He yelled at her for it because they were distracting popping up everywhere and made it hard to fish. Her lips twitched at the memory. Again the sound came, but Mind put it to rest and connected the source to an old sign they'd seen for the town. Nothing left. Stay away. It swung on the one remaining hinge in the breeze. Once it had said Woodenville, but someone took the opportunity to spray paint over it hoping to keep people out. By the lack of decay, those same folks had since gone the way most did. The disease wiped them out, if one of her kind hadn't. The feral ones, at least. A crow flapped overhead, tightening the muscles in her shoulders. What started on? A threat? She waited, tense as a rubber band pulled tight, listening for any other noises besides her pack. Boot crunched sand from years of windstorms into old cracked sidewalk from up the block. She deftly caught Sawyer's eye as he emerged from the storefront. An ivy vine worked its way through the broken window of the storefront. Slowly she turned her head back and forth, her shoulders drooping. No threat, all was clear. He tipped his head and moved to the adjacent store to his and her right. Across the street in broken brick lane, rubber ball bounced against tile. A shadow crossed behind dingy window. A flash of blonde hair disappeared down the next aisle in the store. Kimley curled her lip back from her teeth. Keep quiet, Tannis. The female was on Kimley's last nerve. All day Kimley had been on edge, hence her unease with the town. A breeze stirred the hair along the back of her neck, feeling too warm. She scratched at a grimy spot on her throat. Kinley checked all around her. Something, something wasn't right. It was quiet, which was good. It was too quiet, which was not. Wasn't that quiet according to her brother, but then he, he wasn't her. Goosebumps formed over her hot, sleeveless arms. She adjusted the weapon belt that lacked a weapon and checked for the baton she recently found. All there, all good, all ready. 
A primal sensation enveloped her. Danger is coming. Prepare. Their small pack spread out in this small ruin of a storefront block. Her brother was checking an electronics store for potential solar rechargeable batteries. Or another radio. Theirs went kaput a week ago. Not that there was anything on the airwaves at this point. Well, that wasn't entirely true, she supposed. One station, how the hell that worked, she didn't know, played old country tunes once in a bit. Leave it to the end of the world to still have the one available station be country. She didn't mind hearing Patsy Klein, though. That woman sounded all right. Figured the tunes were broadcast through an old record player since they were fairly scratchy. But anything was worth something these days. <sighs> Kimley took a deep breath, attempting to calm her nerves. The thwap of the tennis ball repeated across the street and she flinched. Keep it in your freaking bag. She scratched a random itch along the back of her leg. The craft store beckoned, but her cracked boots were glued to the spot. Really wanting to find some items to repair clothes and other goodies, she needed to ignore her nerves and go in. It wasn't the first time she felt icky about a day. Always looming, always threatening, it was him. Him who always pricked at any Rodirin's nerves. They had been lucky. The Alpha. Mr. Big Shot, who thought he ran this land or ruled the world, destroyed packs to find strength for his. Their kind feared him, feared his insanity, his brutish, cruel nature. Some revered and respected him despite the fear. We're animals. It's about time we act like it, she'd heard. Humans want us dead. Thinking the plague was our fault. Blaming us for bringing it here. For not saving them. Screw them. Let him run this world. He's the last alpha. Without him, we're screwed. Rumors put him in eastern Washington. But damn it, she didn't listen to rumors. She listened to a deep gut instinct that kept this small pack going when others had long since disappeared and died off or been killed by the Alpha who thought them weak simply because they were small. <sighs> There'd been rumors he was on the hunt, not just for numbers, but for an Alpha female. She huffed. Everyone knew he was the last Alpha. Alphas weren't kind. They were mean. An alpha's bite could heal. But she sure as hell hadn't heard of him healing anything but his own ego. I'll tear his ugly face off if he touches a hair on any of my pack's head. She snorted. Okay, Tannis too, if I have to. She stepped up on the sidewalk avoiding a small line of ants making their way across the path and around a fern growing in the doorway. Then entered the silence of the tomb, which was once called something with an M. Her brain couldn't pick the memory of that name. Hadn't been much into crafting. Maybe she'd find an old ad pretend she was shopping. The sign creaked in the distance. Thwack! She winced. Freaking ball was gonna be thrown out soon. A silent giggle shifted her shoulders. Tannis hadn't considered. She was stereotyping herself. Wolf? Ball? Irony? Kinley pressed her lips together to keep from making a sound. Taking a deep breath, she scanned the aisles as if a dim, silvery light were about. Not that they needed the flashlights they used, but humans did, and it helped them blend in if they came across any. 
the government still handed out the glasses that allowed the mark of the beast to be seen, but many didn't remember to use them or care, and their packs had been breeding on the extraordinary occasion, so not all of their kind bore the mark. <sighs> That's why she didn't mind most of the human population like many of her kind did. If they put a gun in her face, she didn't hold back. It was rare to find weapons anyway, so that wasn't likely. But the majority of humans wanted to live peacefully and were trying to rebuild their lives like the rest of the world. Her only problem was with that one beast. The shadows of the store lent more to her unease. Sure. Sure. She saw better than a human in the dark. Didn't mean there weren't still shadows. Instead of piddling about, she determined her best course of action was to get in and get out. Well, like her old sh shopping routine used to be, really. In another life, when she was young, before the facilities. Most of the shelves were bare. Not surprising. She guided herself smoothly around an easel, around a shopping cart lying on its side, placing each foot with great care. She kept an eye out for broken glass. Some of the shelves were broken, some held on, but were as bare as her stomach. She tipped her nose up and sniffed. Dust, mold, rat feces. Hope none were here now and there were old, dead, ick, and... Something else. It was deep, dingy, but strong. Old leather, maybe. She stepped toward the scent, brushing her fingertips along the edge of a box at the end of the aisle. Old leather. She could understand other scents, like roses, lavender, the like. Candles had been made and purchased here. Old wood was a plenty. Plants that had broken through the floor. Leather. It was faint, though, so not in the store, but near? <sighs> Maybe where they kept the material and fabrics in the far back of the store. A glint of plastic along the floor caught her eye. Not too large. It was a tiny traveling case for sewing. Yes! She whispered and grabbed it from near the end of a shelf on the dusty floor. Realizing she spoke aloud, she paused and listened. All good. Must have fallen out of someone's pocket, or been kicked underneath the shelf so it had been passed by. First time all day she felt any sense of hope. As she pocketed it and stood, the hair on the back of her scalp curled toward the ceiling. The barest of bare stirrings of wind whispered along the top of her left palm. She froze, tilted her head toward the interior of the store, the deepest parts she hadn't reached. Every nerve ending came to life as the dog barked in the distance. They'd seen it a mile up the road, an old mutt, hanging in the shadow of an old pickup, once, twice, then a third. Kinley's body fired up and sprang to life. Danger! She caught the gleam of moonlight bare, but there, two small tiny orbs in the back, behind a shelf unit, ducking back. Without knowing how, without knowing why, she knew, with every fiber of her being, the Elfus pack. She sucked in a deep lungful of air, knowing there was no longer any reason to remain quiet. No reason to stay hidden because they'd known all along her pack was here. They planned this moment, purposely stalking, purposely waiting, hunting. <sighs> then it came in a rush as the spark of red flamed to life in the female's eyes, gathering Kinley spotted her. Run! Kinley bellowed as she spun on her boot heel. Kinley's voice rang through the store and out into the small abandoned town, alerting all her pack to the enemy they faced. 
because if she screamed, hell was on its way, so move. Kinley plowed through the aisles, grabbing the shelving units to use them as a deterrent, twisting them behind her. She hopped over fallen items, spun around corners, hopping over the fallen cart. She tumbled over the easel when she bumped it and it smacked to the ground. She used the moment to check behind her as she caught herself before face planning. The flash of red blurred toward her. Spiky hair, cruel eyes. That's all she needed to note. Kinley flew through the store, headed toward the door she came in, rather than risk veering off to some side door. As she approached the front of the store, she scanned the front, the aisles she passed, the broken glass that used to make up the front window, watching for shadows, noting anything she hadn't seen, all clear ahead of her. When Kinley left the store, her breath caught, as did her boot in the crack in the sidewalk. She hiccuped, fearing she was going down, but her fingertips grabbed the metal door frame and allowed her to secure her footing. The thud of feet came from behind her inside the store as Redhead barreled through, coming after Kinley. Kinley's heart bashed against her ribs. She paused for a blink to get her bearings. A large body stood in the frame of the door across the street preventing Tannis from exiting, but their pack hadn't survived all this time against fiercer opponents because they were weak. They were small, but they all held their own strengths. They took courageous risks. Or stupid. She preferred courageous. Tannis crashed through the, Tannis crashed through the glass near the far end of the store. As annoying as Tannis could be, she was scrappy as hell and didn't waste time using her coat as protection against shards of glass. Not that they wouldn't be able to heal wounds. <sighs> shards of glass rained down like the tin tinkle of a wind chime in the summer breeze. Mr. Large Ginger Hair, looming in the doorway, turned to the right as Tannis landed in a crouch. He ground out, Hey! Then on it, with a slight tilt of her head to the right, Kinley signaled for Tannis to go ahead without her. Unless in dire need, it was always get out and find each other later. Not because they weren't a team, but because it was rare one of them couldn't save themselves. Against lar the larger packs, they were always training in the game of survival. They'd had lots of practice. Safer to split up in most instances, they'd regroup later. And most of all, because of the alf, the scent struck her nose as she cleared the storefront. It was barely a pause in time, but time slowed excruciatingly. The breeze came from right to left, but that unmistakable odor she smelled earlier in the store slid down her spine like calloused hand against bare flesh. Kinley's head swiveled to the left as a powerhouse stepped around the corner at the end of the street. Slowly and deliberately, he stepped into view. One step, two steps, a wave washed ahead of him of pure primal strength seemed as if heavy drums began to thrum again and again, announcing his presence. The connection bound against Will. Her heart warned her of what was to be, what had been for all time coming. There was no escaping what came. In even slower motion, his head turned toward the sidewalk where Kinley placed a foot to pivot and bolt up the street. A good span of space separated them, but her vision zeroed in on the mail like a homing beacon. His green eyes captured hers the instant she exited the store. Her entire world spun out of control and right into his hold. The aura he put off struck her in the gut. Without having ever laid eyes on him, she knew exactly who he was. Her soul did. The Alpha. 
end of chapter two. If you want the link for the official page, go into the description box. If you want where to purchase this, you can find that also on that official page link, but also the Lulu link where it says paperbacks below. If you want a Lucy tucked around in, in the blankie. Oh, excuse me. If you want a full listing of all my work, description box again, very last link, and casual note on this particular story. If you like werewolf or wolf stories that are based in more of a science aspect than magical and everything that's what these are the rove deer in the name came i believe i created it from a norwegian word but they are basically what we would be if evolution created us to understand truly how to alter our very being the way we can self-heal, it's kind of a play on that, as well as evolution coming from animals. doesn't matter your beliefs or anything. It's just using that belief system and playing off of that. And it is the idea that we, a branch of us, learned how to actually manipulate and use that ability to alter our shape and wolf just it's just my thing i love wolves i've loved wolves my entire life i have them all over for my room and everything you'll i mean i even have it an earring that i made a necklace and it's the idea that of what would happen if we were like that. So in this world, it's, you know, the world has collapsed because of a disease. They are immune to it, which is why they have been hunted, captured, and used. But it's that alpha bite that most is sought after because it's something in the saliva that his mouth produces when he bites in and, you know, lengthens the teeth. Kind of a vampire play on that. That they most want to find, capture, um, create more of, and use to try to heal. They use alphas to try to breed more alphas to create either weapons for the military or for slavery. It's a play on all those classic themes, basically. But it's just a more science aspect of it. So in a world like that, these are people who... They can't always shift shape because they're struggling to eat. They're tired, just like everybody else. But they are not allowed in these government-run cities where you're allotted a certain amount of privileges if you obey all the rules. Sounds similar, doesn't it? So, they are the outsiders, but they are also the ones most sought after because they, people have this idea they're just a wolf, they're evil, because so many have turned against humans. So many have decided, well, you're treating me that way, I'm going to be that way. You want to make me this person in your mind, I'm going to be this person and give it to you. Or creature, or whatever you want to talk. So it's just a play on the idea of being able to manipulate our very cells. And what problems arise from that same thing because of it. It's not magic. They don't heal and suddenly become awesome. They don't heal in the blink of an eye. They don't heal or sh shape shift. My mouth doesn't want to say that word today. And 
have all these benefits. It's painful. It's hard. Over time, people used to doing that and have that strength and eat well. And they, you know, they've taken care of themselves. They have a less of an impact like any of us who've, you know, spent our life exercising. And we have that slight more athletic part to us that help us and benefit us versus those of us who don't do that. So then it would be much harder on a non-athletic person to shift into a wolf and it would take its toll and it would take longer to recover from that. And it's playing on that idea too. If they are not taken care of, someone shifting their shape into a wolf could kill themselves just trying to be the wolf but the wolf has its advantages that double coat better vision can smell better so there are advantages to doing that to protect yourself but there are disadvantages because this is reality not reality but you know in their world it's reality that come along with being an animal like other animals in that realm, wolves, vicious dogs who have been created in a lab to hunt said wolves, things that as an animal you have to deal with that you can't stop, like a certain season of a female, that you cannot stop. But if you have happened when you are the wolf, then you have to deal with the reaction of real animals who aren't going to be like, oh, this is a human. You're still an animal to them, so you have now a disadvantage if a pack of them corner you. So it's advantages to being in human state versus wolf state, wolf state versus human state, but there are also disadvantages to being being in the wolf state when you are dealing with real animals who are competing with you if you can't hold your own. It's no magical fantasy. Everybody gets along and everybody loves you. This is a hard world. But in the midst of that, then you have two people, especially one who does not want to be herself doesn't want to exist as herself and she is of the belief that she is not that special everything and everyone has made it very clear they don't think she's special some have but the majority make it very clear she's not special there's nothing good about her and she's just wanting to finally exist be left alone not have to deal with people treating her as they've treated her, not to be special, not to be something because she's tried and tried and tried again and it has failed her. It has failed her pack and so now she's just focused on her small pack who are committed and loyal to one another and she just wants to focus on that not deal with someone who's not going to be committed and loyal, who's not going to protect her. But then here comes this person, as we see at the end of the very first chapter, suddenly her soul and everything about her lights up and she's like, her entire viewpoint just switches. But she's also heard plenty of rumors where he's, he's not special. He's mean. He's cruel. He's insane. He's probably going to just use her and keep her among a mini flock of others. And so it's all these competing struggles inside of her based on what she is, based on the world, based on what this suddenly is representing for her. His focus on her freaks her out. But also we see her say how much she'd love to tear his face off because she is not going to be one of those mini women he's got in his corner at all. Nope. 
so <laughs> it's got a lot of dynamics but I tried to in this one keep it as close to as a reality based science idea as possible not just cop out oh they healed themselves because they shifted shape and all is good they might slightly heal, heal themselves but not really because if you're losing a lot of blood and you're not getting yourself fed and taken care of and rest well you live in a horrible world you gonna die so I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you enjoy the book if you get it. If you do, I'd love to hear it. I'd love the any feedback. As always with my work, if there's something that you want to see that maybe I didn't answer fully, Sometimes those things spur another book in me because I'm like, you know, that's right. I didn't really address that, but that would be really fun to address. It's how Dark Illusions became a series. People wanted more of Gober. People wanted to know what had happened with, I forget what. There's something else. So it became a whole series. It's not you give the ideas. It's not that I'm taking the ideas. It's that... You bring up stuff that make me start to think about what I haven't brought up or answered. So I'd love to hear anything you have to say. It's totally fine. And I hope that you have yourself a wonderful day. I hope that somebody has the chance to make you smile. Or you have the chance to make somebody else smile. <laughs> Someone's feet are threatening to push you all over the place again. So I am headed to get lunch because my tummy is grumbling and growling and I'm exhausted and hopefully I recorded this. <laughs> I hope I recorded this with audio this time or I'm doing a third round with it. <laughs> this is how the professionals work. Just so you know, it's how you get the really high... <laughs> Of numbers do you record 50 videos without audio <laughs> and just post it at least I caught it before watch next time that I record a video it has audio but then I save it without the audio <laughs> and then upload it so you guys are going is this whole thing muted <laughs> it's probably it's gonna be what happens professional it'll be me all on me if i upload and something goes wonky and it's all on me i'm gonna say it's all on me <laughs> don't you worry i am that perfect so i hope you guys have enjoyed this if you are new here remember to subscribe if you are returning i appreciate the subscription check it youtube loves to dump subscriptions and twitter and all of it always double check your information like it comment on it share with somebody if you think they'd like it comments help me to have YouTube boost this channel as much as liking and sharing so if you think people would value this channel just leave a comment chit chat me up in the comments not weird stuff okay the weird stuff no just you know good stuff <clears throat> and if there's something you would like to see oh because this isn't long enough um so there was comments from my mom recently on this channel addressing something I'm not sure if I have said it in a previous video but Will was suggesting me read children's books. And then my mom was suggesting that I do that recently on a comment. But as I explained, there are copyright issues. I do plan to read other work. I also plan to read authors who are just starting out within the first few years if they have something that they would like read 
I would need ex written permission. But just to read for this channel to help you grow as much as me. That's always been a big deal for me is to boost my growth so that when I'm sharing other work, it's helping them to be seen. So, as I think I had... Did I tell you, Will? I think I told you. It's always like I'm talking to a million people, but I freaking only talk to Will and Jeannie and I forget everything I say. Too much in the brain, but I think I told you. I think I told Will that I do want to read stuff, but I have to have it out of copyright. It's got to be something that is Project Gutenberg website has a lot of stuff like that. That's where I will be pulling from probably. They have to be classics. Well, don't have to be, but generally the ones out of copyright are um, the classics. If there's a particular one that you know of specifically for children or that you'd like me to read in general, let me know. Again, has to be out of copyright for me to freely read it without getting in trouble on YouTube. If it's later on, I will open up to new authors to try to help boost them like their first chapter or a short story as I settle into this channel and I really grow and build stuff that's what I'd like to do because I want I know the struggles of starting out making mistakes rebuilding all of that and I want to help you as much as myself with this stuff so I will be doing that later on now that I'm reading these chapters, I can explain that. And I would love to read stuff that's particularly for children. Stuff that's for children that's not like just children that I can't, that I'd have to be extra careful with because... Some of my work, obviously, is not going to be good for children. I try to curb certain things, like in that chapter that I was reading. If you read it on my website, you can find the actual chapter. I curbed a few of the words because they were a little too far for YouTube. So I said, screwed. And I want this to be a channel that... Mila again. I want this to be a channel that not necessarily little young children can watch, but it's not going to be something that you have to be extra careful with if you listen to, so that kids would be, you know, scarred for life. <laughs> but I do write horror, and I may read those excerpts too, so, you know, be aware of that. I may end up opening a different channel for that kind of stuff because somebody suggested ASMR and I was thinking of doing some work from like a more ASMR style and it would just be reading work. I'd have to figure out a good channel name for that. So if you have thoughts on that too, let me know please. And I'm always open to thoughts and all that stuff. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon. More to come as usual.